Hi, people, I'm just dealing with the technology. Thank you very much. All right. Um, so look, thank you um, very much for inviting me to give this, this talk. It's, it's a real honor and I don't know what a treasure means, but hey, <laughs> let's go with that. Um, I also would like in opening to acknowledge the indigenous peoples and nations on whose countries we are holding this conference and pay my respects to those peoples and indigenous peoples with us today. I would also acknowledge that beneath these indigenous lands, are the ecosystems that protect, provision, support and sustain us and to pay our respects to the other beings who share these ecosystems with us. Without them, in functioning ecosystems, neither a well society nor well people are possible. Third, I want to acknowledge Stephen Boyd and his pioneering work on biosensitivity and the Frank Fenner Foundation, whose logo I have adapted to use here um, to capture the primary message that underlies planetary health. And that is that well people require a well society and both are founded on well planetary ecosystems. I also acknowledge that the indigenous approach to caring for and healing country is a parallel process that teaches that we respect the environmental foundations of the human project. Now in this talk this afternoon, I'd like to first of all, briefly talk about planetary health, define it and look at some of its uh, components. But secondly, and more importantly, I want to answer the question, what must the public health movement do to protect and promote our planet's health? So planetary health is defined by the Lance Commission who uh, promotes the term um, as the health of human civilization and of the natural systems on which it depends. That is, we're not referring to the health of the inanimate rock that's hurtling around the sun at fast speed, but to the planet's physical, chemical and ecological systems, which enable life and enable human civilization. The Commission also acknowledges that while humanity is the wealthiest it has ever been, this has come at the cost of destroying the fabric of the natural systems on which we depend. And the third important point is that it is what we do, it is human behavior, which is driving this process, individually and collectively. It is us. This is not to ignore that it's also a systems issue. As individuals, we're caught up in our political economic system. But as individuals, we have a role in either maintaining or changing that system. And I'll return to that later in the talk. So, one Health, environmental health, human ecology, eco health, they are all aspects of the planetary health and they're all important in their own way. But what planetary health does is tie these entities together in a framework that we can use to think about um, how we live on this planet. As a planetary community, we're in strife. The February 2021 United Nations Environment Program report, Making Peace with Nature, put it bluntly, humanity's environmental challenges have grown in number and severity. They now represent a planetary emergency. The first instalment of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's sixth assessment report on the climate catastrophe is the climate science community saying very politely to us, guys, act now or we're fucked. Our planet is not well, our society is not well, and people and other species are not well. So what are the implications for public health? In brief, the survival of our species and all the other species and avoiding immeasurable suffering along the way to extinction. So what are we to do? 
there are three steps. One, identifying the situation, and two, responding appropriately as public health professionals, and three, responding appropriately as individuals. The first step is to use a clinically analogy to use a clinical analogy. To correctly treat the problem, we must have an accurate diagnosis. I'm using a political economic diagnostic lens here because I think this most accurately frames the situation we find ourselves in and therefore what action we can take. In summary, leaving out pretty much all the nuances, one can summarize the cause of our unwell planet as the adverse effects of the behavior of large, poorly regulated corporations, consequent to government failure, brought about by the influence of said large, unregulated corporations, producing a political econ economic ideology of neoliberalism, capitalism, and a description or a name rather than a description, that shapes our expectations, beliefs, and behaviors individually and collectively. So governance failure is deliberately created by the active influence of the corporate, of the corporations, the uh, so-called corporatocracy. We are now operating in a political system where the rules of the game have maybe not changed, but become more overt. Politics has become about winning office, not to govern for the public good. I'll let that sink in office not to govern for the public good. We can see it is blatantly about buying influence to get elected. Sport rocks, car parks, premiers shredding documentation and going, yeah, that's how it works. All this rorting, the attempted, um, recently the attempt to chill charities out of advocacy, all these examples, show that MPs, however well-meaning they might have started out, were caught up in this corrupt system. We see this also when neither major party supports and indeed votes against many of the provisions for good government being introduced from the crossbench. MPs are constrained to vote along party lines. Our political leaders' response to COVID and climate disruption show that science is always bent to corporate needs, not for the public good and not for the public's health. MPs choose when they will accept the science and when they won't. Some of the COVID pandemic response, JobKeeper, RoboDebt, the NT intervention, shows that when they want to, politicians will act. The Uluru Statement from the Heart, funding an adequate public health workforce, Addressing the climate catastrophe, and I learned this morning, big meat, or the poor regulation of big meat, show that when they don't want to, they don't act. These decisions are driven by corporate, not community interest. So, take home message one, no longer is presenting evidence or being a critical friend sufficient to get the policy and legislative outcomes that we want for a healthy planet. In playing the game this way, we are losing. An important caution, how we talk about this situation is really important to understanding and getting the outcome we want. If we talk about government as the problem, we sing from the corporatocracy's hymn sheet. The corporations aim to trash government. We cannot afford to be contributing to the, any narratives that disparage and sideline government, sideline government. As public health people, we realize that we need and we want good government to deliver on its province to protect and promote well-being. So instead, we must be consciously promoting a narrative of good government for the public's good. We need to talk about a political system that's been run by the corporatocracy and by the corporatocracy for their own ends. And we need to identify that it is the politicians, the members of parliament who are the ones 
behaving badly. It is the MPs who have become unaccountable, dishonest, lost their integrity, and are serving the interests of big business. We need to identify that this is driven and abetted by the mouthpiece of the corporatocracy and in the Anglosphere, this is particularly News Corp. We need to be demanding good government and MPs with integrity who are accountable to their communities. Our situation is both a systemic issue and a human behavior issue. The system is built to deliver outcomes that advantage the corporates and destroy the planet's health through our elected representatives. And it is the behavior of the MPs co-opted by this system that allow these detrimental outcomes. And it is our behavior as people, community members and citizens that either allows this system to continue or to change. So what do we do? We transform the political economic system so it works for us. But how I hear you say. We need to act both in our personal and our professional capacities in the community and societal domains. The main game, personal and professional, must be political because only political action can change the system to create the instruction, the structures that we need for good governance for the public's good. To paraphrase Richard Dennis, the response to neoliberalism is democracy. So effective political action is about strengthening democracy. And there are two aspects of strengthening democracy. We need to work with other organizations to improve the institutional structures supporting and promoting good governance, such as integrity commissions, caps on donations, fizz, um, caps on election spending and so forth. And secondly, and this is the new point I want you all to take home, we need to improve representation in parliament by promoting active community participation in electing and working with MPs who will govern for the public good. And I'm focusing on this latter action because it is an immediate, practical, focused action that we can all take as citizens, personally and professionally, to change the system within the very short time we have to protect, promote the planet's health. I like this analogy by Hendricks and Al and they're all and her other authors, this idea of mending democracy. One of their themes might be paraphrased as our system is tattered but functioning. The best option is to mend the system, not spend more time and diverting effort away from making that, that would go into making a new system. So actions, strengthening democracy. One, improving the structure of government. It's not like we don't know what to do. The PHA since yesterday evening now has a policy that sets out action that PHA can be taking. And indeed, we already are. Second action is improving representation as the way to improving good governance. And I wanna spend the rest of this presentation discussing why good governance is important and how we can achieve this with personal and professional action. A bit of theory of change. It's the MPs in parliament who make the decisions that determine our future. So getting the right MPs into parliament is the practical and immediate means to mend the current representative electoral political system and to change how parliament and government work so it works for the public good. The right MP is one who has the necessary skills and knowledge to undertake the job as an MP, who demonstrates the necessary integrity to hold that position, who votes for measures that structurally strengthen good government, 
who actively works with and is directly and personally accountable to their electorate communities and who systematically seeks input from their electorate communities on policy and lawmaking. At the personal level, the key to getting the right MP is to, uh, for us to become active citizens. Being an active citizen can range from being part of an electorate group who regularly meets with the MPs to discuss and advise them on policy and legislation issues, through to something most of us can do, which is vote tactically at election time, informed not only by party political positions or policy positions, where these exist anymore, but more importantly, by the quality of the candidate. Are they the, going to be the right MP? Our power as voters rests in who we vote for and how we assign our preferences. This is a new way of thinking about how to vote. This is a new way of thinking about being a citizen. It's about thinking of candidates as job applicants coming before us to an interview, not as party political faces. One tool for seeing how your sitting member of parliament is voting is this one, the They Vote For You website. You can visit here and you can discover how your MP votes and whether they're voting in a way that promotes the public good or not. Being an active citizen in your, is also about communities taking back power to choose the representatives who will work with them in their collective best, best interest to enhance the public good. It's not saying we're getting rid of political parties, but it puts pressure on parties and candidates to change how they approach and work with their communities. So part of the answer to how do we get good government and policy that addresses the public good rather than corporate interests is to elect and work with these right MPs. And in parallel, we need to be using all the avenues we can to advocate for structural change and promulgate to our families, in our neighborhoods, at our workplaces, this new narrative about how politics can work. At the professional level, we can act through our public associ or professional associations such as the Public Health Association of Australia. If PHAA, and other health organisations are to be effective in achieving our vision of well people in a well society on a well planet, we have to change how we play the game. Humanity is at a, at a crossroads. Doing more of the same, advocacy, special friend, critical friending, isn't going to cut it. Good government needs to become a central focus for PHAA and the broader public health movement. Getting good government is the underlying principle that achieves all the objectives we're interested in. Obesity, substance use, road safety, climate disruption, diabetes, heart disease, other non-communicable diseases, biodiversity list, the loss, the list goes on. If human civilization collapses, most of that becomes irrelevant. So as our professional organization, I'm inviting PHAA to put more resources into campaigning and advocating for better democratic institutions as a core component of public health action, enacting our new policy. And we need to promote the new story of a new democracy and how it can work. I acknowledge this is going to present some difficult choices for PHA's members and leadership. It means changing our priorities and our operational plans. But in this coming decade, it comes down to deciding if we want to keep losing our habitable planet and seeing the public's health trashed, or whether we accept the difficult and indeed courageous challenge to help change the way that politics is played in Australia and indeed internationally, to ensure a well future for our species and our planet. PHA members, the board, staff, will need to have a conversation to work out if and how 
we can do this. If you think some of these ideas about electorate level mobilisation are fanciful, then consider that over 30 electorates around Australia already have voices for groups. They demonstrate that people are interested and keen and prepared to work for a community elected MP who is responsive and accountable to their local, to the local electorate and to vote them in over party selected candidates. Numerous other groups are working in the community selected independence for the House of Representatives and the Senate. Active Democracy Australia is looking to support these and establish a network of active democracy groups across electorates in Australia to get existing MPs and the community working together. PHA needs to see how and if they can promote and support these initiatives. To start to wind up now, to return to some personal action. The Australian Democracy Network, of which PHA is sort of a supporting member, has set up the Our Democracy campaign, which um, is pushing for stronger regulation of corporations in our politics. With other groups, they're promoting Craig Rucastle's documentary, The Big Deal, to raise awareness about corruption on Australian politics and support for the electorate-based democracy movement. You can register to hold a local screening of The Big Deal or watch it on the ABC on October the 19th or on iView. So in conclusion, In the current political economy, we are losing. That is, we're failing to adequately protect and promote the public's health. We have an unwell planet and we're heading to human extinction. To stop losing, we have to change how we play the game. In fact, we have to change the game. The way to change the game is to put more resources into changing the political system so it delivers good government for the public good. The two means of change are to strengthen the institutions of good government and to help communities realize their power to select and work with MPs who will invite the public to work with them for good government. Time is short. We need good government now for planetary health. This is our supporting and re-energizing public health agenda that coming decade. Over to you. Thank you very much.